good day everyone and uh, welcome to today's webinar on 802.11ac uh, which is gigabit wi-fi my name is Pranav Vishwanathan and I am the business manager at NetSim and along with me is Kanak who is an application engineer. We are currently muting all participants and in case you have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the chat option that is there and uh, send in your comments. In this webinar, we will start with an introduction to 802.11ac or gigabit Wi-Fi following which we will be discussing some of the key functionalities of 802.11ac such as frame aggregation, block acts, OFDM MIMO and we will look and we will have a look at different rate adaptation algorithms and finally touch upon some R&D uh, areas in 802.11ac. So let us start with an introduction to uh, the 802.11ac. Uh, 11ac is known as very high throughput VHD or gigabit Wi-Fi. It is also sometimes known as 5G Wi-Fi and is a faster and more scalable version of 802.11n. It couples the freedom of wireless with the capabilities of gigabit Ethernet. 11ac achieves its raw speed eleven AC achieves its raw speed increase by pushing on three different dimensions. Firstly, there is increased bandwidth with an increase from a maximum of forty megahertz in dot eleven N up to eighty and one hundred and sixty megahertz in eleven AC. I hope everyone is able to see this and hear us. In case you are having any difficulty, please send us a message. Coming back, so the first is increased bandwidth that is there up to 160 megahertz. The second is a denser modulation scheme. 802.11ac uses 256 QAM, which is up from 64 QAM used in 802.11n. And finally, it has MIMO, which is multiple input, multiple output capabilities while 802.11n had 4 spatial streams, 11ac goes all the way till 8 spatial streams. So in this, uh, in the next part we will look at how to create a wireless LAN network in NetSim and the different devices involved. So, wireless LAN network basically consists of devices like access points and wireless nodes. Um, in NetSim, this is a screenshot of a scenario on NetSim which we will be showing you. So, we will now, here you can see that you have uh, an AP that is connected to two wireless nodes via the wireless interface and on the back end connects to a router and then to your server. This is the simplest possible scenario that you can think of where the wireless nodes are downloading a file from a server node. So we will now open NetSim and show you how you can create a network. Yeah, so we are just going to open NetSim now. So this is the GUI of NetSim and you can see the devices that are there on top and then you have application, then you have some trace functionalities and then run simulation, environment settings and zoom and so on. So we will start by dropping one access point, two wireless nodes, one router and a wired node 
which will act as a server. So to connect the access point to the router and to the server we will use wired links. And to connect the access point and the wireless nodes we will use wireless links. Now this with a few simple steps we have created a network in NetSim. We will now add an application. So the application can be dropped and it is always dropped on the top portion above the grid. Here users can use this icon to configure data flow in the network. So right click properties. And in this particular case, we set a constant bitrate, which is a CBR download from the server to the wireless node. This means that packets of size 1460 bytes will be generated every 20,000 microseconds and will be sent from the server to the wireless node. Now to set the properties of the devices, you can right click on the devices. We will start with a right click on the access point and here you can see that under standard in the physical layer we have various standards 11A, B, G, N, A, C and P. For this webinar we will focus on 11A, C. You can see that the bandwidth can be set so we have options of 20, 40, 80 and 160 megahertz. Then other parameters like the transmitting antennas and the receiving antennas can also be set. Then on top we have 802.11e in the MAC layer which can be enabled or disabled. 802.11e is used for QoS or quality of service. Then Wi-Fi also uses a rate adaptation algorithm for determining the data rate at which the traffic must be sent. So NetSim has support for a generic rate adaptation algorithm and also for the latest minstrel rate adaptation algorithm which is used by the current Linux distribution. RTS CTS mechanism can also be enabled by setting the RTS threshold to be lower than the packet size. And similar settings can also be set in the wireless node. Uh, now most of these parameters and the working of these parameters will be explained as we proceed in the webinar. In addition to the device parameters, wired and wireless link properties can also be configured. In the wired link various parameters like up speed, uplink speed, downlink speed, bit error rate, propagation delay can be set. And in the wireless link various propagation models like line of sight, Fading, fading only, fading and shadowing can be set. This is a quick overview of the GUI of NetSim. We will show you how to run the simulations subsequently. Now, as you may be aware, NetSim comes with source C codes that users can modify. So we will quickly take you through the file system of 802.11 and the source code files that are there. So you can right click and open the install directory and here if you go into the SRC folder and go into simulation you will find a netsim.sln file. So this is nothing but a solution file in Visual Studio. So once you open this you can see that all the files are open here in Visual Studio. And these are the different files. There are various protocols that are there. As you can see, we have application, we have ARP, cellular, cognitive radio, Ethernet, and so on. And in this, for this webinar, we'll focus on uh, 802.11. So when we open 802.11 project, we see various files. Firstly, the file csmaca.c consists of code related to the csmaca algorithm. Next, the file 802-11.c and 802-11.h are files that are common to all the 802.11 standards, namely A, B, G, N, A, C, and P. Next, we have a propagation model, which is there. This file contains codes related to calculating 
the path loss, the received power, SNR, fading, shadowing and so on. The RTS CTS file is dedicated to the RTS CTS mechanism which is optional and can be enabled or disabled. Uh, the files 802 underscore 11 phi dot c and phi dot h are files uh, that consist of codes related to the phi layer of 802.11. Similarly, 802 underscore 11 mac dot c and mac dot h relate to the mac layer. Now these are generic 802.11 files and specific to 802.11 ac is the file 802.11 ac dot c. So you can see this file over here. Uh, this file contains all the different bandwidth, the different phi parameters and so on. We will be explaining more of some of these as we go ahead in the uh, webinar. The files generic rate adaptation dot c and minstrel dot c and minstrel dot h are files related to the rate adaptation algorithm that is implemented in NetSim. Now coming back to the features of 802.11 AC. The first important concept that we will be talking about is about frame aggregation. With MAC layer aggregation, a station with a number of frames to send can opt to combine them into an aggregate frame which is known as a MAC MPDU. The resulting frame consists contains fewer header overhead than would be the case without aggregation and because fewer and larger frames are sent, the contention time on the wireless medium is reduced. Further, there is a single block ACK that is sent for many aggregated frames thereby increasing the data rate. Also, there is no waiting or holding time to form an MP, AMPDU. So the number of MPDUs to be aggregated totally depends on the number of packets already in the transmission queue. The maximum length that an AMPDU can obtain or in other words the maximum length of the packet that can be received is 65 535 bytes. The utmost number of subframes it can hold is 64 because the block act bitmap field is 128 bytes in length where each frame is mapped using 2 bytes. Uh, we will be explaining this frame aggregation and block act in the next few slides so you will get a better understanding. So here you can see that there are 3 packets P1, P2, P3. Usually in WLAN what would happen is that P1 will be sent, then you will get a act for P1, then there will be again contention, then P2 will be sent, you will get an act for P2, then P3 will be sent and you will get an act for P3. Whereas what happens with frame aggregation is all three frames are aggregated and there is only one contention following which all three frames are sent. And instead of sending three acknowledgements like what used to happen before, in this case a block acknowledgement will come back and the block act itself will indicate whether all three have been successfully received or not. So in NetSim this frame aggregation can be set in the physical layer properties. So if you go back to the software and if you look at it, this is where the frame aggregation can be set. So up to 64 packets can be aggregated and this is the maximum number of packets as per 11AC standard. And we will be showing you the effect of this aggregation using a Wireshark packet capture. Next coming to block act. Block act was initially defined in 802.11e as an optional scheme to improve the MAC efficiency. 802.11n enhances this block act mechanism and made it as mandatory to support by all 802.11n capable devices. So from 802.11n onwards the concept of aggregation and block act started and as explained earlier instead of transmitting an individual act for each frame, multiple frames can be acknowledged together using a single block act frame. The block act contains a bitmap and each bit in this bitmap 
represents the status that is success or failure of a MPDU. So the image shown here explains how lost frames can be identified and retransmitted using the block act. As you can see frame number 126 is lost and this is clearly identified in the bitmap where the corresponding bit is set to 0. And here you can see that in the next retransmitted frame, in the next AMPDU, this thing is retransmitted. NetSim currently uses compressed block acts and it is an enhanced version of the block act defined in 802.11n. So next what we will do is we will create a network scenario in NetSim and demonstrate the effect of frame aggregation and block act. For this purpose we will use an already saved network scenario. So we go to open and from here you can open already saved network scenario. So we open a very simple network where we have one access point and two wireless nodes and packets being transmitted from one to two. Uh, we then run the simulation and in this case we have enabled Wireshark packet capture. So as the simulation is running, uh, Wireshark is capturing packets Wireshark is an industry standard packet analysis software and Wireshark is now capturing packets as the simulation is running. In, in that scenario in NetSim we had set the maximum number of frames that can be aggregated as 10. So now as you can see over here, um, like in this case we can see that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 packets have been aggregated. In this case, 4 packets have been aggregated. This aggregation is based on the input generation rate. So based on how many ever packets are there in the buffer, so many packets are aggregated and sent. In some cases, it may be 8. In some cases, it may be the maximum of 10. And let us look at the block act. So when we double click and expand on the block act, it shows um, it shows it in hexadecimal form. So here you can see FF and when we convert the hex to binary we can see that uh, that will represent the number of packets that have been aggregated. So this is the bitmap of the block act. <coughs> 